If you're unsure what we mean by the big three, it comprises of three companies, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Kobo. These are the big three because they are the primary and most major manufacturers of all the e-readers we know and love, the Kobo Forma, the Amazon Kindle, the Barnes and Noble Nook, etc. These companies make e-readers and e-readers only when it comes to the consumer electronics they make. However, there were a couple times they ventured off with the Barnes & Noble Nook HD, the Kobo Vox, and say the Amazon Fire HD. None of the big three were doing what all these other companies were doing. Remarkable, Supernote, Onyx, Boyu, everyone else. And that is note taking. Until today, this is the Kobo Ellipsa. This is a 10.3 inch note taking tablet running an e-ink screen with an active capacitive pen. An extremely out of character move by Kobo, only making basically e-readers up until this point for the past decade. The package comes with a bunch of stuff too. It comes with a very nice magnetic case as well as the stylus and of course the reader itself and a USB-C cable. Now before we get started, there's a couple firsts here. This is the first time Kobo has ever had a screen larger than an 8 inch, the Forma. This is the first time they've used a USB-C and this is the first time they've had a stylus enabled device. You can't use any old Wacom stylus on this. The Onyx, the Remarkable, the Supernote, the Stadler, the Mitsubishi, the Lamy. You can't use any of those pens on this because it's not running a Wacom screen with EMR, electromagnetic resonance. It's actually running a proprietary active capacitive pen in which you need a quadruple A battery to put in the back so it will work. And other active capacitive pens like the DPT and the Boyu P10 will not work on the Kobo Ellipsa. So it's completely isolated to just the one pen. Now, now, given that, it does have some nice features. It has a replaceable battery, which is kind of positive because you don't have to charge it. You can just swap out the quadruple A battery, keep a few on hand at your house, and then just keep writing. Not only that, it has two buttons on there. A lot of manufacturers don't put buttons on their pens anymore, but this one has two buttons, a highlight and an erase. It's also important to note the Ellipsa is using a brand new e-paper screen. It may not be color, but it's called the Carta 1200. It features 20% fast response and a contrast ratio improvement of 15% over the traditional Carta 1000. The new film also reduces pen latency, meaning it's faster when you write, and it gives a more responsive user interface as well with a little bit more support for animations. The home screen has changed a little bit, but things are in mostly the same place. You have everything on your top bar. You have your refresh slash sync, all of the things that you are reading. My books recommended that will lead you over to the shop and everything down below on the task bar. You can take notes right away on an EPUB on the Kobo Ellipsa. You just simply write on the page. You can still change pages with your fingertips and you can write and take notes along the way. So you can do underlines, you can do circles, you can basically do anything you want. Now you have a few features here. You can press the button towards the back if you want to erase things. It erases and it automatically refreshes. Also, you can press the button towards the front if you want to do highlight. Highlights really quickly, although you can't over highlight your highlight like you can on the DPT. It just kind of removes everything. If you press the highlight button and tap on the highlight, it will ask you if you want to remove it or add a note as well as search. It kind of is a quick way to do a long press, although you do have the ability to use your fingertips and the capacitive to do a long press, in which case it opens up the dictionary. The way you change your font line spacing margins are very much the same as other Kobo devices. You also have some reading stats, your settings, and a drop down of additional things here, which review details, dictionary related books, and hints and tips. No fancy settings required, you just simply start drawing on the PDF and you can hold the highlight button to make highlights. So without having to go to the palette, you can make regular lines or highlights anytime you want. The eraser is very easy as well. Press and hold the other button and it erases everything you've done. So that's the beauty of having multiple buttons on the pen. You don't have to visit the palette at the top of the device nearly as much. Pinch and zooming is a little bit slow, but you do have a mini map to help you along the way, but it does suffer from the lack of having that extra speed mode. Unlike some readers that can isolate and identify text, this one does not. So the highlight button will not actually highlight justified from the left. You actually have to scrub and scribble the highlight in order to make your highlights much like you were using a real pen and paper or a highlighter and paper. You do have the ability to long press as well. So that will allow you to do the same thing as it does in an ebook. And you have Wikipedia, web search, and a drop down for some translations. 
The note-taking experience isn't robust, but it is unique, and it's one of the most unique we've seen. It has two different notebooks. You can choose the regular note or the advanced one. The advanced one gives you a lot of options. It gives you four different brushes, five different pen sizes. You have to kind of rely on that when you don't have Wacom because the pressure sensitivity isn't as stable. And you have five different colors. Now, it isn't running a color screen, so four of those are shades of gray, but they do look good, and it does do a good job given that there is no color screen. Screen. If you press the three dots on the top right corner, it has a drop down of even further options. You get things like insert drawing, insert diagram, you can insert math equations, and even free form selection. I know it's extensive, but don't worry, we're going to be doing an individual note taking video on this on a future video, so stay tuned for that. It'll be a lot deeper than this one. You can even convert your handwriting to text. And not only that, when you do do your convert all, it actually answers your math equations given that you've written them properly. That's cool. You're able to instantly draw shapes like triangles and squares and then freeform select it and move them around and stretch them and piece them together. That's really cool because before, with other devices that offer shapes, they're always perfectly geometrical shapes. But this one allows you to freeform, draw them with your hand, and then change the aspect ratio of those handwritten drawings. Also, after you're done, you can not only export them directly to your device or computer, you can actually send them to Dropbox right from your device. So simply click on the Dropbox icon, go over to your phone or PC and put in the code. After you permit them and go through all the permissions, you can go ahead and start using Dropbox as normally and transfer things to and from your Kobo device and your phone or tablet or just your computer program with Dropbox on it. Nothing necessarily takes advantage of the 10.3 inch screen when it comes to the bookstore. The bookstore is very much just the bookstore, but they do have overdrive on this as well, which not all Kobo devices have, only a few of them do. So you can actually borrow books from the library right on this. You can see our YouTube channel if you want to look at how overdrive works we will put a link in the description down below of course you have the quintessential beta features that a lot of these major manufacturers have they have their experimentals and then the regular stuff so the beta features include web browser large print mode my words sudoku unblock it which i don't think i've seen before on a kobo device they also have solitaire word scramble and of course bluetooth to connect to a wireless speaker it does not have a warm light but it does have a glow light and the glow light is good now it's kind of hard to illuminate a 10.3 inch screen that's why some 10.3s and 13.3s alike don't even have glow lights because the led can't properly illuminate the screen unless there's a lot of r d behind it that allows you to do so however this is done very well for the size To say the Kobo Ellipsa is a bold choice is an understatement. It's an extremely bold choice. To release something 10.3 without a warm light and without color in the midst of a saturated market of nothing but large screen color devices and color note taking devices is extremely bold, especially coming from Kobo that isn't using an Android operating system or even a Wacom pen. Especially given that device manufacturers like Remarkable, Supernote, Boy U, Onyx are on their second, third, if not fourth generation of devices that Kobo bringing out something right now might seem like a risky move. Was it a risky move? Yes. Did they do a good job? Absolutely. This thing is phenomenal for what it is. People have this negative idea that when something doesn't have Android that it's not good. That's not the case. This operating system is stable. Everything works. Nothing crashes. You have no background processing, meaning that the battery lasts way longer and there's no notifications pinging you every three seconds saying you have incoming email, your gold has been stolen, download this app, ads popping up at the bottom. It's actually a more beneficial thing than you might think. For a long time, devices have been kind of it's just business as usual everything's cookie cutter Kobo definitely breaks the mold maybe not on the design front because it does look a little bit cookie cutter but when it comes to the delivery of the note-taking application the reading application the things you can do with each individual thing it's a complete unique experience that no one else has given you before not only that we go back to the big three this thing is released by Kobo Rakuten which is a huge company with a very long track record but not only has a good reputation but you can also buy these in 
stores. Devices that we all know and love like the Onyx brand and everything, they're really not available in stores or you can walk into a store in 100 plus countries and look at these things. That's just not the case. But with the Kova Rakuten, you can do that. This is something that's familiar. It's a household name for some people. And although it was a risky move, so was the Kobo Mini, this thing was an absolute must have for their lineup. It's the first time one of the big boys have gone into note taking and it couldn't have happened with a better company. For GoodyReader.com, a full review of the Kobo Rakuten Ellipsa 10.3 inch note taking e-ink tablet, this is Peter.